How's it going, Great A Nation? Chris Thomas here. Hope you're having a great A kind of day. And on this installment of Great A Nation, we're marking something pretty historic. We're on a new hosting platform. We've transitioned from Transistor.fm, and we are now on Red Circle. And Red Circle provides a whole bunch of amenities for podcasters to grow their show and a, a lot of these tools are are for free, so it's great for anyone new interested in doing a podcast to get started on Red Circle. Uh, we started on Anchor, and we could only get so far with Anchor in terms of getting the word out. We moved over, transitioned to Transistor.fm, and we were able to get in pa- Pandora, and that is... The platform that is probably the most significant for us in terms of getting listeners downloads for the audio only version. Whereas on YouTube, we probably have our largest audience, and that unfortunately doesn't count towards our podcast numbers, but we're very grateful for everyone who checks in on Great A Nation on whichever platform works best for you. When you say that, you know, you transitioned, we transitioned to Red Circle. Does does that mean that we're going to have to, uh, you know, take some estrogen and chop chop our willies off? Good times, Tom Liddell. What are you talking about? Well, I mean, when, when people say that they're transitioning, it usually means that they're going through a change. And it's a pretty dramatic change. And I don't think I'm ready for it. Well, we're not talking about a gender change. We're talking just about a shift in our podcast hosting service. Well, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I'm kind of nervous about this. I, you know, red, red circle. I mean, is is the circle talking about the, you know, a, a poop shoot? All right, that's enough. Let's try and talk about the matter at hand, the topic at hand, which is the Burger King advertising camp campaign. But before we get to that, I just want to again say. Thank you to Red Circle for making the transition. Oh, here we go. (sighs) For making the transition very easy. And I encourage people to start up a podcast. Make your voice heard on Red Circle. So, thank you. And we are going to talk about this Burger King advertising campaign in Finland where the Burger King mascot, the king, is sharing a passionate kiss with someone that is supposed to look like the Ronald McDonald character. And they're making out. I mean, they're really getting into it. Yeah, that's right. I mean, it was like, geez, I I, I thought I was watching a, a scene from... By and beyond. Okay, good times, Tom Lido. It's just a drawing. How, how, don't, ay, ay, ay. You know, we we took a little bit of time off to move over to Red Circle, and we're already off the rails. That's right, my friend, yes. Let's, let's get to the matter at hand. Let's talk about this ad campaign, which is pretty, pretty out there. Thank you, Dale Pine. Uh, I I don't know if it's pretty out there. I mean, it's for Pride Week in Finland, and the ad says, Love Conquers All, and Burger King Finland says in their statements to the media, quote, Burger King has always stood for equality, love, and everyone's right to be just the way they are. The only instance where it might not seem so is when we're bantering with our competition. We wanted to show that in the end, 
Love always wins. And we know McDonald's stands for the values we stand for too. End quote. So Burger King Finland has come out with this advertising campaign for celebrating pride. And I don't really see a problem with it. I mean, it is, you know, the first time you see it, it's, you do a double take. But the message behind it is one of, you know, love and respect for others. And what's wrong with that? Well, you know, this is something that I just have to say I don't feel comfortable with it because I don't I don't know if I feel safe as a uh, straight male in a Burger King anymore. Good times, Tom Lando. Why why would you feel that you're not safe just because you're you're straight? I mean, this is the Burger King in Finland. This wasn't a Burger King U.S. ad campaign. So what are you worried about? Well, I mean, if the Burger King in Finland is doing stuff, it, there's always a chance it's going to happen in Burger King uh, U.S. away. Isn't that right? I mean, if Burger King Finland feels that way, then Burger King U.S. is probably the same, same way. And, you know, that picture, that image of the Burger King jamming his tongue down Ronald McDonald's throat is going to haunt me, haunt me for the rest of my life. Well, I, I don't know if he was jamming his tongue down Ronald McDonald's throat. It, it was a intense kiss, I'll give you that. It's just something where, you know, if I walk into a Burger King, I'm not going to be comfortable getting a Whopper or a a crispy chicken sandwich. Why is that? Well, I mean, because they have mayonnaise in those sandwiches. And now I'm not sure, I'm not sure. If that's mayonnaise anymore. What do you mean you're not sure if it's mayonnaise anymore? Well, it it might be Ronald McDonald's milky sauce. All right. uh, So so you're saying that on a Whopper and a crispy chicken sandwich and any other item with mayonnaise that it's no longer mayonnaise, that it's... Ronald McDonald love juice. Yeah, that's right, exactly. Do you, do you know how much mayonnaise is put on food at Burger King? Do you actually think it's possible that you can put, uh, even make, you can make that much uh, Ronald McDonald love juice, preserve it, Distribute it all over the country and then put it on products. I mean, are, are you for real? I think you're just trying to be funny. Well, I mean, it's it's something that I'm uncomfortable with. You know, if I'm eating a Whopper and I take a bite into it and, you know, it definitely doesn't taste like mayonnaise. I'm going to be thinking, you know, would, oh, my God, do I have to go get a test? Okay. Um, Dale Pine, what do you think about this? Well, it's something where if someone feels uncomfortable with getting one of the sandwiches, they can certainly choose to get something like chicken nuggets. I mean, I, from... My point of view, I, I'm a big fan of the Burger King chicken nuggets. I actually like them better than chicken uh, chicken my nuggets from McDonald's. So I'm, I'm, I'm someone that doesn't have a problem. I'm fine. Well, 
I, I, I don't, I don't feel, I, I'm not fine, I'm not fine. And there's a cardboard cutout of the king at the Burger King where we're at. And I just feel like the cardboard cutout of the Burger King is undressing me with his eyes. And he's fantasizing that the mozzarella sticks and chicken fries or is Burger King Jr. if you catch my drift? Oh boy. Uh, so so you're saying that the cardboard cutout of the Burger King, an inanimate object, not a real person, is looking at you in a suggestive way? Yeah, that's right. It's looking at me in a way that makes me feel like I'm being harassed in, in Burger King. I'm being harassed in a, you know, a sh- romantic, romantic way, but it's an unwanted, unwelcome romantic advance. Uh, I, I just, I'm, I'm, I'm not seeing it because I, I've seen that Burger King cut out at, at our Burger King, and. I I I just don't see him like making eye contact with anything. It, it just looks like a random cardboard cutout with soulless uh, dead eyes. Well, it's just you have to put all the pieces together. You have to put it together cuz I mean think about it. They don't advertise the big fish sandwich, right? That's right, yes. That's right. Thank you, Dale. They they don't do they. I have not seen any advertisements for the big fish sandwich. And sometimes I would be potentially open to a big fish sandwich if they gave a coupon because Burger King does have some pretty good coupons. Yeah, they tried. They don't even give coupons for the big fish sandwich, and I think it's discriminatory. Uh, they're discriminating against women. Discriminating against women? How are they discriminating against women by not advertising the big fish sandwich? Well, when you order the big fish, all the employees are trained to get a disgusted look on their face and say that you have toxic masculinity. Well, why would they, why would they say something like that? Well, because Burger King associates the big fish sandwich and the odor of the big fish sandwich with the odor of female anatomy. Oh, God. (laughs) Jeez Louise. Okay, so Burger King is ashamed of having a big fish sandwich because the the aroma of the sandwich reminds people of a woman's anatomy, a special anatomy. Exactly. And that's, it's just something where, you know, they're anti-woman, which you often see with People who happen to be of that orientation of, you know, toxic, angry males that are just opposed to women. And that's why they're trained, the Burger King employees, to to not even talk about the big fish sandwich. And when you order it, they, they get a look on their face like you just, you know, kidnapped someone or something. All right, I don't know about that. I've never ordered a, a big fish sandwich. I, I wouldn't trust uh, a Burger King with with fish, so I think your controversy is a little bit overblown. Well, I don't think it's overblown at all. I think everything I said is valid and something to think about. And also, I've been... Remember when Burger King made those classic and chili cheese grilled hot dogs? Yes, that's right. That that was something that was kind of strange when you really think about it. 
because you don't associate hot dogs with Burger King. That, oh, should Dale Pine and, and myself are really on the same page today? Well, you you might both be smoking something special today, too. No, don't be like that. If the Burger King made the hot dogs, it was out of depraved perversion. It, it's just sick. The Burger King employees, I remember this. I remember now that I think about it, whenever I would order one of the chili cheese dogs, from Burger King, all the employees were uh, clapping their hands. They, they were trained to clap their hands when I ordered a hot dog. And that's kind of training you, indoctrinating you into a certain lifestyle. What? That doesn't make any sense. Well, okay, so... When you order a hot dog and all the employees just stop everything and start clapping their hands, cheering you on, making you feel like a million dollars because you bought the hot dog, that's trying to train you into wanting to get that affirmation. And should you keep putting your mouth around the dogs? And pretty soon, you're going to have your mouth around something else shaped like a hot dog. Because you want that affirmation. Oh, Jesus. Um, I I think you've gone off your rocker. Okay, you just saw one picture from an ad campaign in Finland, and now you have this whole wild conspiracy about how everyone in the Burger King would cheer you on for ordering a hot dog, and you're thinking they were trying to indoctrinate you into having a certain orientation. Well, I mean, didn't you order the hot dogs and then they cheer you on? No, I, to be honest with you, I'm not someone that eats at Burger King all that often, and I don't recall tr- trying any of the Burger King hot dogs. Well, I mean, I'm kind of surprised because when I think of someone that would deep throat a dog, I immediately think of Chris Thomas. All right, that's enough. Um, I, I'm just very puzzled by the this. Uh, Dale Pine, do, do you think that anything that Good Times Tomato is talking about has merit to it? Well, I mean, the ad campaign is what it is, and I'm of the mindset that it made harm Burger King's popularity with its target demographic in the U.S. What do you mean by that? Well, I mean, it's something where Burger King is very popular in the urban community. And my survey research backs that up. Oh, gosh. Here we go with the surveys. It's accurate. It's accurate. I've done very complete survey research. And Burger King is probably the most popular fast food in urban communities in the U.S. And a lot of these urban families, unless they have a down-low brother as a part of the family, are not supportive of this kind of stuff. Exactly. I mean, it kind of seems strange, don't you think, to, uh, you know, rub it in the face of your customers that the Burger King is essentially uh, eager to rim Ronald McDonald. Okay. There was no rimming of Ronald McDonald. It was just a kiss. Well, I mean, when you're kissing, there's going to be a lot more that happens more often than not when we're talking about love, right? Love conquers all. So, I mean, if if you think they're just kissing, I think you're living in Candyland fairy tale world. All right. Uh, so, do you have any closing thoughts on this? 
realize just that the visual, every time I see that ad, I just picture in my mind that, you know, a whole bunch of white makeup around the Burger King's beard, and I can't say for certain if the makeup all over the Burger King's beard is from a passionate kiss with Ronald McDonald or that his lips were around something else or Ronald McDonald's and he got makeup all over his face. Maybe he was bopping up and down on Ronald McDonald's uh, grilled hot dog. Okay, uh, you know, th- if this is the first show that is uh, being released through Red Circle. Uh, it it might it might be the last because it it's just been a debacle. No, it hasn't. It's been good. It's been good. I like this conversation, and I hope we have many more on the Red Circle platform. As long as I don't have to take estrogen and chop my grilled hot dog off. Yes, that's right. I'm very happy about Red Circle. Okay, well, at least we can agree that we're eager for good things to happen on Red Circle. Stick with us, Great A Nation. Support us. Share the show. Tell people to download, subscribe. Give our show a chance. It's pretty good. Uh, other than this episode. What? What's that supposed to mean? Thank you very much, everyone, and we'll see you next time.